Hi guys, I'm Jenna Bush from Sci-Fi, and we are here in Hollywood for the red carpet for the Disney film Mary Poppins Returns. Let's hear what the cast and crew has to say about the film. Off we go. I don't think there's anyone else that we would have done the film with. The moment you say Emily Blunt is Mary Poppins, it's so instantly authentic and undeniable that you can't help but smile when you say it. And of course, she does what the film tries to do. She, she takes just enough from what we remember of the magnificent but uh, unreproducible version of Ju Julie Andrews, and yet she then makes it her own. She draws upon P.L. Travers and, and that character, and she finds, has found a way to do her own original take that is as moving and as exciting as the first one. I actually think we, we used a little of both Marys in this film. I think I went back through the books, uh, and, and uh, we all pulled out our favorite little quirky phrases and, and mannerisms of Mary Poppins along the way. And we made these lists. We called them Mary Popisms. And whenever I was at a loss for how she might handle a situation, I'd flip through and see if I could use anything. And we did use quite a few of them. Um, so we were bringing a little more of that uh, sharpish uh, uh, attitude and, and a little bit of severity and the vanity. But Emily does such a fantastic job of making the, uh, the vanity charming and the sharpish uh, quality seem, uh, you know, uh, compassionate uh, that, that I felt like we had the best of both worlds. Well, I think we love the original so much and have such respect for it that we felt very confident in our ability to be guardians for what we needed to put in this film and how we had to remember the original and yet still be very original and create our own original story. And I think the greatest challenge was finding that balance of protecting what was beautiful about the original and what we felt from it, but also using our own imaginations to create a whole new journey with a whole new group of actors and new music and new adventures. Um, and I hopefully we're very successful. P.L. Travis wrote eight books um, over the period of decades into the 1970s, from the 1930s to the 1970s. All of the books are essentially uh, each chapter is an adventure unto itself. It begins with the kids going into the park or going off to the beach or going into the clouds or underwater and going off on an insane adventure and at the end of the adventure Mary Poppins says, I don't know what you're talking about, it never happened. And they're wonderful adventures but they're self-contained. So we had the liberty to take what we liked of those adventures and then thread a story through them. I find a reason that those uh, stories uh, advanced our plot and, and gave our characters knowledge about what they were going through and helped them on their way. Well, what was really nice about the project when I first met Robbie said, don't worry about recreating anything. We're making our own film. And he had this lovely idea that it's 20 years later, the two little kids from the movie, Michael and Jane, have grown up and it's Michael's kids he comes back to. And it's a completely different story. It sets, it's now in 1934, it's in the slump, it's a very kind of gritty, gray world we come into. So there were some elements that we wanted to keep, the kind of serpentine quality of it. We loved that it was across from the park, had to have Admiral Boom next to him. But they're humbler houses, so they're not the beautiful plastered mansions. It's exposed brick. It's a, it's a, a, a little more middle class. I would love to ask you about meeting the original Jane on set. Oh, that was an amazing day. I loved her. I loved Karen Dutrice. She was uh, she is a beautiful person, a lovely, funny, earthy woman who um, who obviously was so brilliant as, as as little Jane in the original movie. And it was such a, it was so, it was so, it felt like such a sort of stamp of approval in a way that she showed up and and did this cameo in our movie. And and I I was fortunate enough to be present as she walked onto Cherry Tree Lane for the first time in. 54 years since she was a child and saw that set which Rob had so lovingly recreated and she was really moved and it was very moving being with her. Well, in the entryway of the set we built, the, the entryway table where the telephone is, is actually the original table from the movie. Walt had taken that table and put it into uh, Club 33, the, the, the restaurant and Rob had seen it there, so we got on the phone 
and say, can we borrow it? And they actually shipped it out to us. So there's a piece you could actually touch that was from the original, which was fun to have. Can you talk about writing a slightly racy song for Mary Poppins? I know, it, it, there, it is a I little racy. Well, Mary can be a little racy in a music hall. It's sort of another color for her, isn't it? I mean, we, we took a cue from in the first movie, the classic Mary Poppins, when she gives the kids medicine and then she pours herself some and she goes, mmm, rum punch. <laughs> we knew, oh, Mary Poppins likes to have a little fun. She abides. So and we, she loves laborers. Yeah. We, you know, it's so all we, those lamplighters and, and chimney sweeps. She's just a sucker for that, isn't she? And Emily <laughs> loves pouring herself into that English musical kind of cockney persona. She loved it. Can you tell a little bit about getting Dick Van Dyke involved in this and Angela Lansbury? It was easy because they were so eager to participate in a project that, that did come from such a passionate place of love. But it was also for us just the treat of treats. The day each of them came on our set, one can hardly imagine how excited everybody was. And we felt we were in the, in, in the presence of royalty. And I think the most memorable moment for all of us was when Dick Van Dyke first came on the set and said to Rob Marshall, I have the same feeling, the same spirit on this set that I did on the original one 54 years ago. And that meant everything to us. We were so worried about Dick Van Dyke leaping onto this desk and dancing. And we had created all sort of simple ways for him to get up. And he came in to do the rehearsal and he looked at everything we had done to make it easy for him to get up on the desk. And he said, thank you very much, John, take that all away. And two minutes later, he leapt across the room and jumped on the desk and did the whole dance. Oh my God. Uh, it was, I'm getting chills, it was amazing.